Hello, my name is Rick Frost and my call is K4REF. Just recently I was at an event at our EOC and we used NBEMS to transfer some ICS-213 forms over a local VHF repeater and it again sparked my interest in trying to figure out how to use MBEMS. For me it's been a tough nut to crack. I downloaded all the software, set up my signal link and my radio, set up some macros and tried to participate in a few nets. But I really had a very difficult time getting enough experience to understand what in the world I was doing. But I kept trying because even a blind squirrel will dig up an acorn every once in a while, right? Well, sadly, the end result is I just did not use NBEMS because it just seemed too difficult. Well, I'm here to show you a better way to learn how to use NBEMS. I finally found it, and I wish someone, anyone, had told me of how to do this earlier. This video is not on setting up and configuring your system. This video is about how to use a technique to learn to use it. The secret to figuring this out is to set up your own NBEMS practice station. This is what my practice station looks like. I have two laptops side by side and on both laptops I have headsets attached to them. These are just little uh, webcast headsets that I have. And what I'm going to do is connect the headsets together. So I'm just going to take and put the microphone of each in between the earphones of each headset. And that's basically going to act as my transmission between the two computers. So I've eliminated the sound card interface, typically your signal link, and eliminated the radio. So basically I have a direct audio interface between the two laptops. So this is going to give me a way of practicing sending and receiving as if I was sending from my originating station and sending to a FAR station and then the replies from the FAR station back to the originating station. And I can do this as much or as little as I want to and see all of the aspects of how the transfer is made and exactly how things work. And this way I'm not tying up frequencies or tying up my friends trying to find someone to practice with. So this practice station will let you learn how to use FL Digi and its associated softwares and do it as much as you need to till you're extremely comfortable with it. Once you get your two laptops set up, or they can be desktops for that matter, and you have your headsets physically connected to each other, uh, you want to go in and set the levels. Uh, prior to doing this, I suggest you go and download a software made by Darkwood Designs. It's this meter that you see right here. It basically lets you see uh, the level uh, of the sound on your computer. And I like that a whole lot better uh, than the little green indicator that's on uh, FL Digi. Uh, so I use that on all my sound card interfaces. So the link to it will be on the YouTube page and also at the bottom of this video. Uh, so go ahead and get that on your computer. Uh, to set up the sound levels, uh, just go into your sound card interface and go to both the playback uh, and the recording tabs. And for playback, uh, just go ahead and set uh, the headset as the default uh, and open that up and set the levels to about 50%. Uh, for both uh, the playback and for both uh, the recording. I do that on the recording side. Uh, again, I'll go in here and uh, show you the level indicator. It's about 50%. Uh, for me, that was kind of a good starting point uh, to be able to see the levels that I wanted. Uh, so if you set it in that place, the other place that you're going to have to set it on both computers is actually within FL Digi itself. Uh, so if you go to the configure menu and come down to the sound card interface, and then you're going to need to set up uh, the particular uh, inputs for the headset that you've chosen. On this particular computer, I actually have a little uh, USB interface that's on my computer, and so I'm going to choose that uh, 
for the interface here uh, in FL Digi. So it's, and also make sure that the port audio is checked. Uh, normally these would be set to your signal link, but we're not using the signal link. We're gonna go direct between the computers uh, through our sound interfaces. Uh, so set those, make sure that you hit save and close. And that's really the only configuration you're going to see. You can see with my voice uh, that the headset's picking up. Uh, but if I actually started a uh, 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 transfer from my other computer, uh, you'll see the level indicator for it. Uh, it's very quiet to do it this way. You might be able to hear it in the background. But you can see my levels are about uh, 8 to 12. That's fine. And then you can actually see uh, the transmission that's taking place that's being sent to this computer from the other one. Uh, so once you get those set up, if I ever need to adjust these levels, uh, I can always come over to the other computer, the transmitting computer's speaker volume, and uh, just run that up a little bit, and I can make it louder or softer just by controlling the speaker volume. Again, the really nice thing about setting it up this way is you can practice basic FL Digi sending. So you can see that I have my macros at the top here. I really like the way they've got uh, FL Digi set up to where you can see all four rows of the macros. But if I click on basic CQ, that's a default uh, CQ, uh, and it will tr automatically transmit and stop transmitting. And you can see that it sends... Uh, the RSID and you can see the transmission and then you can actually see it change and now it's in the larger format and it's sending the CQ. Uh, so you can see it send the CQ uh, then I can easily click on uh, the station that sent it to me here uh, which automatically loads it uh, into the call on uh, uh, FL Digi and then I can just hit the answer and then this will become the transmitting station and send the answer back to the first station. So I can go back and forth and practice doing transmissions between my two stations and try out all of the different ways of setting up macros uh, and setting up all the things that I need to do uh, to learn how to use FL Digi. Uh, this really is awesome because it doesn't tie up um, a radio or other people or whatever. I can sit here and just do this and see exactly how uh, the transmissions work, how the, my macros are going to work. Uh, if you're pulling down weather or anything else uh, off the internet uh, to do that, uh, you can see how it fills it in. Uh, there's just a, it just gives you a world of things to try out and look uh, at your convenience. When you're trying to learn NBEMS, and actually NBEMS stands for Narrowband Emergency Messaging Software, although I often think of it as Narrowband Emergency Messaging System, um, FL Digi is the main software that you're going to learn how to use, uh, but there's also three other parts or different parts of the suite of software uh, that integrate with FL Digi that you're going to learn to use. Uh, the first one is uh, FL MSG, that's your messaging software. Uh, you're also going to learn how to use uh, FL AMP, uh, that's for file transfers. And then the other uh, software that you'll learn to use is uh, FL uh, WRAP, FL RAP. Uh, you actually won't use the interface here as much as you'll probably use it uh, within the messaging software. When you create files, uh, you can wrap and unwrap them. And wrapping is just a way of encapsulating that transmission uh, with checksum and the ability to verify that you got all of the message. And so you can actually uh, create messages. Um, I can uh, open up an existing message that I've already got and then you'll see how it populates that particular form. Uh, there's all kinds of forms in here. This is an ICS-213, but uh, there's radiograms and MARS and all kinds of different pre-made forms that different organizations use. Uh, but basically, it gives you, once you uh, put the form the way you want it, and you can choose the, the type of transmission that it's going to make in the base here, uh, I can basically just hit the auto send and it will automatically uh, start transmitting that form. Uh, so you can see that it's sending the form and it sends all of the information. Uh, so you're basically learning to use uh, all of the different subsets of software that work with FL Digi 
uh, to learn the suite of software. Uh, if you go to ARL and look up NBEMS, there are two excellent introductions in a PDF form that you can go through. Uh, you can also look on my website. I've tried to pull uh, and link on my uh, K4REF website uh, the typical uh, videos that are out there that are already out there for setting up and using MBM, uh, MB EMS. And so if you'll go to my website and watch those videos, uh, that should bring you up to speed on how to actually install it and configure it and do all the settings and stuff. Uh, but use this method for actually... Uh, learning to use the software. Well, here you see our final message, and we have up our uh, IS-213 that was transmitted. Uh, FL Digi automatically pops open the message in a form that we can print out, and it's ready to go. Uh, and so you can practice doing this and using this system and using all of the subsets of software that make up the uh, NBEMS system and I think you're really going to love this technique for learning to use the software. Uh, you can practice and do all the buttons and make the transmissions and you're not interfering with anybody and you can do it at your convenience and it just makes it really easy to use. And then when you transfer over and start using a signal link and a radio, you know what to expect and you know what it should look like. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful to you. Use this technique uh, of having your own practice station, and I think uh, you're going to find that you pick up uh, MBEMS much quicker than you would have otherwise. So all the best in 73 from K4REF.